if you're taking supplements for insulin resistance, wouldn't it be nice to know which ones are not effective so that you can stop taking them and instead focus on more effective ones? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover in this video. You're going to learn the 11 most overrated supplements for insulin resistance. Here's what you can expect to cover in this video. First of all, we'll discuss what is insulin resistance. Then we'll discuss why do lots of YouTubers and experts and gurus recommend ineffective and unproven supplements. Then we'll list what the 11 overrated supplements are and why they're overrated. Now, before we continue, if you wanna learn about additional videos that I publish on things like supplements and insulin resistance, click like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, about me, my name is Igor. I am the author of the Amazon best-selling book called Type 2 Diabetes Versal Secrets. Additionally, I've made the first chapter of that book called 11 Diabetes Myths That Are Harming Your Health. Uh, it's available for free in the description below, so check that out. As well, I run an online personal training company that specializes in helping type diabetics reverse their diabetes. So let's dive in. First of all, what is insulin resistance? Here is what a healthy body looks like before we discuss what an insulin resistant body looks like. In a healthy body, what happens is you eat a meal that is rich in carbohydrates. As a result, your blood sugar rises. As a result of your blood sugar rises, insulin rises as well um, to bring down the blood sugar. And sure enough, the blood sugar comes down. That's a healthy, normal, desirable insulin and blood sugar response. But here's what happens in an insulin resistant body. So you eat a meal that is rich in carbohydrates. Blood sugar rises, insulin rises. However, blood sugar doesn't fall, doesn't fall enough, or doesn't fall fast enough. It's the equivalent of, imagine you're sitting at home and somebody is ringing your doorbell, but you don't hear the doorbell. You're not going to let them in the house. Same thing happens with insulin resistance. Insulin goes to your cells, whether that's the muscle cells, the fat cells, the liver cells, and tells them, open the door so that sugar can get out of the blood and inside your cells. However, those cells don't hear the message of insulin, hence insulin resistance. The opposite of insulin resistance is called insulin sensitivity or to be insulin sensitive. And so before we jump into the most overrated supplements, why do lots of YouTubers and experts and gurus recommend ineffective and unproven supplements? After all, they have credibility. Shouldn't they use that to promote good stuff? Well, here's why. Um, they are, there are different levels of scientific evidence. At the bottom, the, the lowest level of evidence is no evidence, which is just an opinion. I believe that it works. And that's my religion. My religion is this supplement works. Maybe I'm selling it. Maybe I'm not selling it. But there's other reasons why I believe it works. Then there's case studies. Case studies means people took the supplement or a person took the supplement and it worked for them. However, that's not a, a carefully controlled experiment. That they, they weren't controlling the other variables. And it's just one person. It could just be a fluke. Above that is observational studies with uh, with lots of people. In other words, if you take a large group of people and some take a supplement and some don't take a supplement, um, and you look at some kind of health parameter, in this case, insulin resistance or blood sugar, um, to see what happens. That's better, that's more evidence. Then there are randomized control trials. This is an actual experiment where you can control cause and effect. With observational studies, all you can do is find correlations but correlation is not causation. So with randomized controlled trials, uh, one group of people gets the actual supplement, the other group of people gets a placebo, and neither group knows what they're getting. And so that's better than the levels below it, but it's still not the best because there are lots of methodological flaws in any one study. Also, a single study could be just a fluke. Maybe they didn't have enough of a sample size. Maybe the sample size was too, um, too skewed in one direction. Maybe just men or just women or just the elderly or just the young. Uh, so there's also problems with randomized control trials. Um, and then the highest level of evidence is systematic reviews and meta-analyses. This is when there's so much research that you can have multiple, five, six, seven, or more randomized control trials, and you can statistically combine them all for, for analysis so you can see what works and what doesn't. So if there's one study that showed effectiveness and then 15 studies that didn't show effectiveness, then you go with the majority. It could be that there's problems with the one study that showed effectiveness. And so that's why lots of YouTubers, experts, and um, and gurus recommend ineffective and unproven supplements because they're not necessarily uh, proven in a large group of people with sufficient and proper research. Um, 
So let's dive into which ones are the most overrated. So one supplement often recommended for insulin resistance is called carnitine. Here is a systematic review. Remember, that's the highest level of evidence. Um, and the title is The Effects of L-Carnitine Supplementation on Glycemic Control. The results were basically um, that carnitine does reduce uh, blood sugar, but only by about 0.3% um, in HbA1c. That is the glycated hemoglobin. Not a heck of a lot to write home about. Very, very insignificant. What about bitter melon? Bitter melon is another popular supplement. Um, and here's a systematic review basically showing that it doesn't do a heck of a lot. Okay. Um, it only lowers A1C by 0.13% more than placebo. It's almost not noticeable. Another common supplement recommended for uh, reducing blood sugar and helping insulin resistance is ginseng. Here is a systematic review titled The Effect of Ginseng on Glycemic Control. Glycemic means blood sugar. And the results were a big, fat, nothing. The group that got ginseng didn't do any better than the placebo group. Another one, and this one's a little more, more complex, and that's magnesium. Magnesium is frequently taken. Now, just because these are not effective for blood sugar doesn't mean they're not effective for other things. Magnesium, I often recommend for things like insomnia, anxiety, constipation, high blood pressure, etc. However, what are the results when it comes to blood sugar? Well, according to this meta-analysis, it shows that magnesium is not that effective for uh, insulin resistance. It only lowered blood sugar by 0.018% more than placebo. Again, not really noticeable. But there is more to this story, and we're going to cover that in a separate video, which uh, I'll, which if you've subscribed to, the, to this channel, you'll learn when I publish that video. Same thing with chromium. On average, it doesn't really do much for blood sugar. However, it does have certain effects. Uh, so in this meta-analysis, it showed that chromium reduced HbA1c by only 0.33% better than placebo. So the effects aren't very large. In a different video, which I'll talk about at the end, uh, um, I discussed the most underrated supplements that um, that improve insulin resistance, and they lower a A1c by 1.0% and as much as 1.40%. Stick around to the end of this video to, show, uh, to, to learn which other one of my videos talks about the most underrated supplements for insulin resistance. But again, chromium is not effective in most situations, but there are certain situations in which it is effective. And if you subscribe to my channel, uh, you'll learn when I publish that video about chromium. Next, let's talk about um, supplements where there is no research whatsoever um, when it comes to blood sugar lowering, and they are vanadium, biotin, inositol, zinc, carnosine, and probiotics. Now, again, that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. It just means we just don't know whether they're effective or not. They might be, they might not be, but there's just not a single shred of research to show whether they have any impact on insulin resistance and blood sugar. So then why are ineffective and unproven ingredients included in supplements? Well, one possible reason is that they are often studied in just mice and rats. Just because something works in mice and rats doesn't mean it can work in people. There is some utility in, in rat and mice studies. However, you can extrapolate that to people. There's a different reason for studying mice and rats. Another possible reason why something might be, um, might be included in supplements, even though it's unproven or worse, disproven, is that they're studying very, very short term. Maybe they're just studying the molecular mechanisms of something or other um, over a period of seconds. Um, which doesn't really translate necessarily to weeks, months, or years. Another potential reason is that they're just studying mechanistic evidence. For instance, with vanadium, uh, vanadium has insulin-like effects. What does insulin do? Insulin lowers blood sugar. Therefore, if it has insulin-like effects, it's a, logical, it's a logical conclusion that vanadium also lowers blood sugar. It's a logical conclusion, but it's not a proven one. Um, so that's why we can't ex extrapolate from mechanistic evidence to here's the bottom line result. Same thing with biotin. Biotin participates in the metabolism of carbohydrates. That doesn't mean it lowers blood sugar. It just participates in the, the uh, in the metabolism of carbohydrates. Uh, there is a potential that it might work. There's also a potential that it might not, but we just don't know. No research exists at the present time. Another uh, reason why unproven and ineffective uh, supplements or ingredients are included in supplements is that they're looking at petri dishes. Just like we can't extrapolate from mice and rats to people, we can't extrapolate from petri dishes to people. Another one is that dosage really matters. Perhaps in the studies, they're giving some, some ingredient at 15 grams. 
However, you don't really find 15 grams of that ingredient in a grocery store or a health food store or a drug store. Maybe you'll find 500 milligrams. You can't extrapolate what happens at 15 grams to 500 milligrams, which is very, very small. And lastly, the amount matters. We, the question we always wanna ask is how much? By how much does it improve insulin resistance or lower blood sugar? If the result is it drops your A1C by 0.1%, is that really that impressive? Is that really that beneficial? Not really. Can you legitimately say that it lowers blood sugar? Yes. But the real question is how much? So maybe it lowers blood sugar, but not very much. Maybe, maybe it improves insulin resistance, but not by very much. So amount really matters. It's a real question of how much. Now, earlier I mentioned that I recorded a video about the, the four most underrated supplements for insulin resistance. They are in this video. So if you want to check it out, um, A, click on this video on the link appearing on your screen or check it out in the description below. Thank you and goodbye.